Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, and our beloved congregation, both who are, watch who are present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, guide you, and protect you at all times and forevermore. Amen. The Gospel of today is from the Gospel according to St. John and uh, chapters, chapter 3, verses 22 till the end of the chapter and then chapter 4, verses 1 to 3 inclusive. The Church Fathers took two chapters, portions of the chapters that is relevant for this Sunday in relation to the church calendar. So it is chapter 3 of John, the Gospel writer, chapter 3, verses 22 till the end and the conclusion of chapter 3 and then verses 1 and 3 of chapter 4. The Lord Jesus is actually speaking about the holy baptism. Because when we look at chapter 3 from the start, the Lord enters a dialect or a conversation with someone called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was one of the 70 elders of the Sanhedrin and also a synagogue leader. In other words, he was a very well educated and well informed and embedded into the scriptures. He came to the Lord Jesus by night as the Holy Bible tells us and engages in a dialect with the Lord Jesus saying, we know that you came teacher from God for what you're doing no one can do unless God has sent them. And then the Lord talks to him, Nicodemus not understanding at all what the Lord was talking about. But the Lord was speaking about the holy baptism. Today's gospel is a continuation from where the Lord leaves Nicodemus. And it says that the Lord came to Judea to a place called Anion, near a place, near a place called Salem or Shalem. And he was baptizing there, so as John the Baptist was there baptizing because the waters were plentiful. Then a dispute was raised between some of the disciples of John the Baptist and certain Jews about purification. So the disciples of John the Baptist started arguing with some Jewish people in relation to purification. So they came to John the Baptist, his own disciples. They said, Rabbi, you know the one you have testified about and you've pointed to him and said, behold, this is the Lamb of God who carries away the sins of the world. Guess what? He is also baptizing nearby and all people are going to him. So what are you going to do? You need to be careful, John the Baptist. We are warning you because the one whom you have promoted is after your throne. He's trying to take over. All people are following him. If you don't do anything now, you'll be left with no one. John the Baptist said, My beloved disciples, I don't know why you are concerning yourself so much with things that are none of your concern." I'm paraphrasing, it's not in the Bible, <laughs> word for word. He said, it is obvious that he needs to increase and I need to decrease. It is only obvious. Because the one who comes from above is above all. The one who came from heaven speaks heavenly things. 
and the one who came from earth speaks earthly things. He came from heaven, he needs to increase, and I, John the Baptist, came from earth, I need to decrease. People have to go and follow him because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one who came to save and redeem the entire world. My role was to prepare the way for the coming of the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. He is the groom since he has the bride. Who he has the bride is the bridegroom. And I am the friend of this bridegroom. And whenever I hear his voice, I rejoice. I am the bride, the groom's best man. See here, John the Baptist is pointing to the Lord as being the groom to the bride. And who is the bride of Christ? The church, every soul that is baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit through the priesthood rank is the bride of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So he said, he is the heavenly groom because he has got the bride. I am the groom's best man. When you're invited to a wedding, do you go to the wedding to see the groom's best man or you see the groom? The wedding is about the groom and the bride. The best man, yes, I know it's important, but he is not the focus. He is not the center of attention. It is the bride's groom who is the center of attention. So all I am, John the Baptist, I am the groom's best man. And something on the side in relation to weddings, my beloved sons and daughters, I beg of you. See, if we are Christians and we call ourselves Christians, then how many bridesmaids and how many grooms, best men you should have? One. Not a train, 20 here and 20 there. It is one. There is only one groom's best man and one bridesmaid. Please, why are you wasting your money on all these dresses? Just to make sure that the picture comes out beautiful. It's not about photos. It's not about videos. It's not about going to Darling Harbor and taking some beautiful shots and paying thousands for those cameramen and video men with all love and respect. Um, don't get me wrong. It's about Christian marriage. Christian marriage. Another point why the church I belong to do not allow a brother or a sister to be the groom's best man or the bride's maid, being brothers or sisters, because John the Baptist was a cousin to Jesus Christ, not a brother. So the blood is too close for brothers. Because marriage is also related to and connected to baptism. So the groom's best man and the bridesmaid, they are supposed to be the godparents for the groom and the bride's future children. You don't bring anyone else. Those who stand in your wedding are the ones who will be godfathers for your ch children in the future. So when it's brother and brother, can't be two brothers, fathers to one child, to the same child. Two brothers cannot be fathers to the same child. It's a long story. You can be father by nature and father by law. You know, when you get married, your in-laws become your parents, but in-law. So they are not the parents who gave birth to you, but they are your parents now by law. 
because you married their son or you married their daughter. So the groom's best man and the bridesmaid, they become in the future parents in law to the children of the groom and the bride. You can't have brothers. The blood is too close. This is the church I belong to. If the church you belong to says otherwise, respect the church rules that you belong to. My beloveds, the gospel of today says the Lord came to testify. What is, this te what is this testimony? The light came to the world and the world chose darkness over the light because their deeds were of evil origin. They hated the light lest them coming to the light and their evil deeds be revealed before the whole world. So instead of repenting, in other words, Instead of repenting, they chose darkness to remain doing evil. But why? You may say, I want to do things my way. Then I'll ask you, my child, son and daughter, I ask you, for how many years have you been doing things your way, can you please tell me what have you achieved? Where are you now? What are you doing with your life? You've done it your way, but I can tell you with absolute confidence, ever since you've been doing things your way, you've been nothing but a miserable failure. Even if you have succeeded at a business level, even if you have succeeded in whatever profession you have, but when you go in that room and you close the door and you sit in silence, you look inside of you and you see absolute emptiness. Void. There is a lot of despair. There is a lot of pain there is a lot of sorrows there is a lot of emptiness why because i have been doing it my way not god's try it if you don't believe me go for it but i guarantee it without fail you do it your way you'll kill yourself you'll destroy yourself because as long as you do it your way, you will always be living in darkness. And those who live in darkness, I don't mean literal, I mean spiritual blindness and darkness. And those who live in darkness, they will never have a sense of direction in their life. They will know, they will not know what they really want. They run, but to achieve what? I don't know. Never content, never satisfied, never at peace. This light is the testimony of Jesus Christ. The light came to the world, but the world chose darkness over the light because they did not want to come back from their evil deeds and repent before the Almighty God. Look at the world around us. It is in absolute darkness. Absolute darkness. Why? Because people do not wish to let go of their evil deeds. They are not ready yet to sacrifice and do it God's way. And for as long as they remain in darkness, 
they remain in death. And eternal one too. What is this light? This light is life. We read in the Gospel of John, according to St. John. And this life is the light of mankind. This light is your life. How did we gain this life? How did we gain this life? Through knowledge. John 17, 3. John 17, 3. And this is the eternal life that they may know you, that you're God alone and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And this is the eternal life that they may know you, that you are God alone and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. How do I gain eternal life? By knowing God and Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The question is, how do I get to know Jesus Christ? The beginning to the knowledge of Christ is baptism. Holy baptism, one of the seven sacraments of the true Church of Christ. The beginning to getting to know Jesus Christ is the holy baptism. What is holy baptism? In simple terms, it is the dying with the Lord, being buried with the Lord, and rising in the Lord. It is death, burial and resurrection. This is faptisma. In the Greek language, it is death, burial, and resurrection. Why do I need to die in order to live? I was born from my earthly parents. What did my earthly parents give me? death everyone born of earthly parents they end up dying isn't it this has got nothing to do with your faith Christianity I'm talking about as human beings every human being that is born of earthly father and mother what ha what happens to them at the end all die all the girls that are here who are my daughters in Christ, I'll say this. When my beautiful daughter gets married and then conceives a child, when the time comes for this child to be born, first water comes, then blood. You're my daughter. Before the child is born, first water comes, then blood. Water represents life. Blood represents death. So my earthly parents, what do they give me first? Life. Followed by death. I am born to live and to live in order to die. My heavenly parent, our Father who art in heaven, sent his beloved Son to give us through his beloved son a new birth this time this birth is from above this birth Jesus Christ made possible for all of us through the holy baptism which he gave for everyone who believeth in him to be baptized i.e. born again born again is not a group of people born again is holy baptism one of the seven sacraments of the true church of Jesus Christ whom he has established with his own blood on Calvary on the cross period so it's not a cult it's a sacrament we need to wake up the Lord came he said, I came to testify for the light. 
And then he says, I am the light of the world. I am this light. And what is this light? Life. If the light is life, then darkness is death. Baptism in our language, in Aramaic, Syriac, the Lord's language, we call it the feast of Dincha or Dinho or Dinha, depending which dialect you speak. So Dincha or Dinho or Dinha literally means enlightenment. Literally means enlightenment. So what is the feast of baptism? The feast of enlightenment. I am receiving the light of the world in baptism. Who is the light of the world? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And what is this light? Life. Life, my beloved. My earthly parents give me water, then blood. First life, then death. My heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, when he was pierced from the side, first came blood, then water, the other way around. First came blood, blood, death, followed by water, life. With Jesus, you begin your journey with the Lord with death, end up with eternal life. The first step to Christ is baptism. What is baptism? Crucifixion, burial, resurrection. I need to die with the Lord on the cross. I need to be buried with the Lord. I need to die. Before I say hello to him, he says, bury yourself. Why? Because the first birth made you fall into sin and the wages of sin is death. But the second birth is going to give you the light of the world, eternal life. And the only way for you to come and gain eternal life, you need to get to know God and Jesus Christ who was sent by God, the Father. To get to know Jesus Christ, I need to be baptized. Why? Because the only way, please pay attention, the only way for the Holy Spirit, who is God, the third person in the Holy Trinity, the only way for the Holy Spirit to dwell in me, I must be baptized. Why do, why do I have to be baptized in order for the Holy Spirit to dwell in me? Because as long as I am living in the former Adam, the fallen nature, I am dead, I am a sinner. God will never dwell in a house that is filthy. He is holy. He cannot dwell in a place of filth. Light cannot mix with darkness. Or darkness so in order to make this house clean in order to make this house bright I need to receive Jesus Christ baptism is death it is the cross that is baptism the blood of the Lamb of God washes me clean purifies this house in order for God dwells in me by his Holy Spirit now the house is clean, worthy of God's residing in it. When the Holy Spirit dwells in me through baptism, it is only then I begin my journey to knowing Jesus Christ and through him God the Father. And this is the eternal life. To know you, God, alone, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I can never know God unless I get to know Jesus Christ. And I can never know Jesus Christ unless the Holy Spirit dwells in me. Unless the, and the Holy Spirit will never dwell in me unless I am baptized and washed clean by the blood of the Lamb of God. So baptism, I die to my old person in order to rise in the new person, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
the Lamb of God without a blame, without a blemish. When the Holy Spirit dwells in me, He will start teaching me who Jesus Christ is. Why? Jesus Christ is the Logos, is the Word. Who can explain God more than God Himself? Can anyone explain God to me unless God comes and explains Himself to me? God is the infinite being. He is the only being that is infinite. Every other being is finite. The finite can never get to fathom the infinite. So therefore, since God is the only being that is infinite, He has to come and explain Himself and reveal Himself to me. The Holy Spirit is God. He dwelt in me by the baptism, which is the light, which is life. Because by the power of the Holy Spirit, I came to know Jesus Christ, who is the Son, who is God Himself at the same time. When I came to know the Son, through the Son, I came to know the Father. When I knew the Son and the Father, I gained eternal life. This was only made possible when I died to my old person, which is the Holy Baptism. That's why the first thing we give a child is baptism. You need to die in order to live. This is the way of Christ. Christ's way begins with death. It's got nothing to do with you growing older and starting to know and start to read and write and get to understand. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Nothing to do with that at all. My dear, you will never ever understand who God is, what God is, what He has done for you. It takes God to explain Himself to you and me. Unless God dwells in you with His Holy Spirit, you'll never mature. You'll never understand no matter how old you grow. There are so many adults they deny the existence of God. What has that got to do with knowledge? Earthly knowledge, I mean. Human knowledge. It's got nothing to do with human knowledge. It takes God to explain Himself to you and me. So I need to begin the journey with Jesus. His journey begins with death, with burial, and then resurrection in Him because He is the only one who died and rose from the dead by himself. When I rise in him, this temple is being cleansed. The Holy Spirit dwells in me, holy baptism. The Holy Spirit begins to explain God to me because the Holy Spirit is God. So I start explaining. Why? Because when he starts explaining, I begin to know Jesus, my Lord and Savior. When you get to know him, you'll end up loving him because you've heard us say this so many times what leads to love is knowledge you can never claim that you love someone you do not know you need to know them in order to have the opportunity to love them so what leads to love is knowledge once you get to know Jesus as you know him so as you get to love him and the more you know him and love him so as the father will be revealed to you because the father is revealed through the son and i gave an example which is from the holy bible saint paul he writes in a middle eastern style don't forget he was born in syria and our prayers go out to syria and turkey He was born in Syria, Middle East. So he was Middle Eastern. And in his epistles, he writes, All glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. All glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because in the Middle East, there is a custom, there is a way of living. The Father is never called by His name. He is always referred to 
by his firstborn son's name. Let's say, and let's assume the father's name is John. In the Middle East, no one will call John, John. No one. That's an actual insult. So he has, he's got a son, firstborn son, the firstborn son. Let's say the son is Ezekiel. In the Middle East, they will refer to John, the father, as, hello, the father of Ezekiel, how are you? Abu Flan. Hmm? That's Middle Eastern culture. If you want to get to John, you ask, you ask the neighborhood, do you know John? They will say no. Oh, do you know the father of Ezekiel? Ooh, everybody knows the father of Ezekiel. What do you mean? You should have said this from the start, dear friend. Because everyone knew the father by the son's name. So the father, God the father, nobody knew until the son was known. Jesus Christ. And the son was known when the Holy Spirit dwelt in me by the holy baptism. Through the holy baptism. The Holy Spirit revealed the son. I came to know the son. When I knew the Son, I knew the Father, because God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, St. Paul says. So St. Paul, do you know God? No. Do you know the Father of Jesus? Of course. How did you know the Father of Jesus? I came to know the Father of Jesus when I came to know Jesus on the way to Damascus. When I came to know the Son, the Son took me to the Father. When I came to know the Son, I loved the Son. The Son took me to the Father and revealed the Father. I came to know the Father. When I came to know the Father and the Son, I gained eternal life. What is eternal life? Light. No more darkness, no more sin. No more lust. Holy baptism is one of the seven sacraments of the true Church of Christ. It's not symbolic. It's literal spiritual birth from above. Period. Because when you read chapter 4, you see today's gospel is part of chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. But if you continue just around the corner with your V8, petrol is too expensive now. When you continue just around the corner, you'll see the Lord Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at the well. You need to understand the language of the Holy Bible. At the well. See, Jesus gained the Samaritan woman at the well like Jacob, sorry, like Isaac gained his woman at the well by Lazarus the servant, the faithful servant. It's a long story. What is the well? Water. Ah, what is baptism? The Lord said to Nicodemus, unless one is born of water and the Spirit cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit. What is baptism? Water and the Holy Spirit. The baptismal font, we put water in it and based on the promise of Jesus Christ, whom he gave to the priesthood rank, we bring down the Holy Spirit by the authority of the priesthood rank, not anyone. Not anyone. Not anyone and everyone has authority to bring Holy Spirit down, please. Not anyone. Who gave you this authority, my dear friend? You? So on, based on what? It is apostolic succession by the laying of the hand. And unless you adhere to apostolic teachings, what authority? What authority? The Lord gave the authority to the apostles. The apostles gave it to the church fathers of 20th century history. You're coming today, you're saying, the apostolic church is blind. The Holy Spirit opened my eyes now in a time where faith 
has diminished. Has diminished. So he meets the woman at the well. Well represents baptism, the baptismal font. He delivered her from her sinful status through the baptismal font. The earthly parents resemble the heavenly parents. When a man marries a woman, they come together, they produce children. The man resembles Christ. The woman resembles the church, the bride to the heavenly groom, Christ. So just like the man and the woman coming together, they produce children, so as Christ came together with the church which is the body and he is the head they become one the two became one this is found in matrimonial bond only father and son are two separate bodies mother and daughter two separate bodies brother and sister two separate bodies the only place the only place where the two become one is in marriage period St. Paul says it in his epistles to the Ephesians. The woman is the body and the man is the head to this body. They become one. The woman is the body and the man is the head. Christ is the head to this body called the church, the bride, the woman. So when Christ and the church, the, his, his bride, got together, they produced children from the baptismal font. The baptismal font is the womb of your spiritual mother, the church. Just like the woman has a womb, so as the spiritual mother has a womb. The church has a womb called the baptismal font. So when Christ united himself to the church, they produced children out of the baptismal font, the womb of the woman, the church, the spiritual mom. I get so sad when people were born from their spiritual mother, the true church, and after a little while denied their own mother. And the law still stands. Respect father and mother to be blessed and giving a long life. That law still stands. When you are baptized in an apostolic church and then you grow older, and some winds blow into your ears and brainwash you and take you out and say, I do not belong to this church. I was given birth by my spiritual apostolic church, but today I am someone else and somewhere else. You have denied your spiritual mother. You broke one of the Ten Commandments given to Moses by the Almighty God. The Lord came to give us life and abundant one, eternal life. And this, no one can give you that. With all love and respect to all the religions of the world, with all the religions, Islamism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Shintoism, that should have been wasms instead of isms. And I'm saying it out of love and respect. They should have been Muslims. You go to all of them and say, can you guarantee me life? They'll say no. Why? Because what we do not have, we cannot give. But you come to Jesus Christ. He says, he who believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. This is a promise. And he who receives my body and drinks my blood will live in me forever. This no one ever did to say except one person in the history of the entire human race. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He made a promise, you follow me, I will give you eternal life. 
just hold on, believe, and trust in me. Life eternal, I guarantee it for you 100%. As long as you stick by me and follow me. Don't veer off the road. And when you veer, come back and repent quickly. Come back and repent quickly. I am known to save those who believe and trust in me. But in chapter 4, it says that when Jesus realized the Pharisees started causing trouble, uh, Jesus is baptizing more than John the Baptist. When Jesus realized that he was baptizing more, even though Jesus was not baptizing, it was his disciples. Why wasn't Jesus baptizing people? See, this is a proof that baptism is death. The reason why Jesus did not baptize, he gave baptism to the disciples to do, because baptism is to be buried. Jesus did not come to bury people. Jesus came to raise those who were buried. Jesus came to give life, not death. That's why he did not do it himself. He gave it to the disciples. He said, you go and bury them. I came to raise them. That's why he did not do it himself. He gave it to the apostles. Because Jesus came to give life, not death. Man, Jesus is stunning. My beloved children, sons and daughters, please, I beg of you, go and have fun, but with the Lord, with the Lord. Choose people that have chosen the Lord, not the world. And make those people who have chosen the Lord your friends. Because if your friend belongs to Christ, he will take you with him and with her to the Lord. Do not waste this precious life on the pig's field. The pig's field is the world and all of its pleasures and treasures. It is nothing but a pig's field. It's filth. The world is filth. My son, my daughter, you've done it your way. There is even a song and I've done it my way. And he's proud to say, I've done it my way. on your head. You've done it your way, you stuffed up, brother. You're nothing but a miserable failure. You need to let Christ do it his way in you. Sometimes things come out of this bishop never thought of, you know, like I never planned. It just comes nature, naturally, as they say. I beg of you, whatever you decide to do, think. Think twice. What are the consequences of this? I need the Lord Jesus. He is the light of the world. I need to be in this light present. Because in the light, everything is clear. Everything is very vividly clear. But in darkness, nothing is visible. So you went with your friends your way. You did things your way. What happened to you? Lost in this world. Done the wrong things, said the wrong things, ended up in the wrong place for the wrong reason so many people started with the Lord ended with the world and perished away 
Believe me, with the Lord, it's still fun. Don't think you'll become a monk or a nun. Don't be afraid, my daughter. You can still get married. You can still go and have coffee and have lunch and have dinner. But with the Lord, sensible, reasonable, within limits and boundaries. Not, don't be just an open gate. You can still have fun. Man, I say to the Lord, give me a high five, brother. And he does. Yeah, yeah. He's got a great sense of humor. I can tell you this. Yeah, yeah. The Lord doesn't joke, but he's got a sense of humor. He's got a sense of humor. When you pinch him on the cheek, he goes, naughty boy. Why you pinch your Jesus for? Well, because I felt like it. You got a problem? No. Well, then tough luck. I'll pinch you. I'll squeeze you. Goody, goody, goody. With the Lord is beautiful. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Ach, ach, ach. Ouch in English. Believe me. It's beautiful. Ach is the Middle Eastern style. <laughs> Translated into English. Ouch. Always be with the Lord. Don't ever say, oh, don't, I'm not going to go to church. Oh, not again. The bishop is going to be doing the sermon. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have a nap till he finishes. I'm not letting go of you that easily. Tough luck. You come here, not less than one hour of sermon. You have an ache anywhere in your body. I don't care. Why are you rushing? You want to go out? Out is dangerous. Out is darkness. Out is the flood. Out is poison. What are you rushing for? Try and be in the presence of the light for as long as and as much as you can. Because here is life. Here is holiness. Here is purity. Here is clarity. Here is success. Here is prosperity. Here is dignity. Here is honor, glory, life, eternal. I'll leave you with a joke. By the way, I hope this person is watching us because this joke came through an email. I'm not sure if it's in Australia or abroad. So if you're watching us, <laughs> here is your joke. <laughs> I don't remember, recall the word, uh, the, the, the joke word for word, but I'll try as much as I can to remember. Anyway, this person had a horse. So they trained the horse. When they say to the horse, <laughs> when they say to the horse, uh, hallelujah, the horse needs to stop. And when they say to the horse, praise the Lord, the horse needs to run and jump. So every time, horsey, hallelujah, stops. Praise the Lord. So one day, they were going for a nice ride, and the horse started speeding like a Formula One. And they realized <laughs> the cliff is coming. It's the end of the road. <laughs> it's a very steep cliff. <laughs> Out of panic, they forgot what they taught the horse. <laughs> so they said, God is good. <laughs> God Almighty, Jesus Christ, nothing is happening. Before the edge of that cliff, they remembered, they said, hallelujah. The horse stopped. Ah, oh, they couldn't believe it. They said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Did you get it? Good. <laughs> Don't teach yourself things that could get you into trouble. <laughs> All right, so, okay, what are we doing now? Okay, I'll say a prayer for you. If you love me and you know it, clap your hands. Oh. You're still awake? That's a miracle. Okay, now we shall continue with our sermon. Just kidding. Okay, let's bow our heads. Ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness. 
and make us worthy to come and receive him in the true body and blood of Christ the King. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life. Amen.